He's always speaking. I think the real question is like, are we listening? Even if I mess up and even if I step in the wrong direction, God's grace and his purpose is going to prevail in my life. I am not strong enough to destroy what God has for me. What's up guys? Welcome back to the Jaywalkers podcast. I'm Ali Shanaki and this is Colby Shanaki and we are so excited that God has brought you here. We believe that you are watching this podcast right now because God has a word he wants to share directly to you in today's episode. So make sure you guys limit distractions as much as possible. Tune in as God gets ready to speak directly into your life. But before this podcast starts, we do want to ask you guys, it would mean the absolute world if you guys would like, share, and leave a review of this podcast. We cannot reach the ends of the earth without each and every one of you guys joining and linking arms with us and saying that you like what God is doing here at the Jaywalkers podcast. And if you post on any of your socials, make sure to tag Jaywalkers podcast and Jaywalkers worship. And we're going to do our very best to repost as many of you guys as possible and say a big thank you to you guys for joining with us in this mission we have. And with that being said, we're going to get into today's episode. We've been throwing this one back and forth for, we've been talking about it for a little while now, but I don't think we've actually articulated what exactly we wanted to talk about until this week. And I relate to it a lot. I know that you relate to it a lot, but it's really just the idea of how to hear God or more specifically the idea of like, how do I know exactly what I'm hearing is from God? What are you (laughs) laughing about? What the heck are you laughing about? I just love watching you communicate sometimes. Why? Am I expressive? No. Is it my hands? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It's so your hands. I just love watching your mind just spin and the way that you get places. It's just so funny to me. So anyway, (laughs) we're getting back to the topic. Wait, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? What do I mean? I'm so curious now. It's, it's just fun watching What do you, you mean? Like, do I think. get from point A to point B in a weird way? Are you judging me in 100%. front of all my friends? 100%. 100%. No, but on the real, this is something that me and Colby have been talking about just in our everyday life so much. Because I know for me and you specifically, stop looking at me like that. Stop looking at me like that. I'm just judging. I know you are. <laughs> for me and you specifically, like this last season of life has been a season of so much shift and transition and steps out in faith and with that comes a lot of prayer and moments in times with God where you're like God what am I supposed to keep in my life what am I not supposed to keep in my life how do I know what is you what's not from you what feels like it's from you but really it's just me and my desires and that whole entire idea of hearing God's voice and what does his voice sound like how do I really know if it's him Mm -hmm. is a huge huge problem that I think a lot of us face all of us face at some point in our life and, and we're so, like dealing with that right now with like so everything much. that we're stepping into and the things that we're going away from that we've been doing for a long time I wasn't even thinking about that until you just said that but like it's the truth it's like it's true when it when it comes time to shift and when it comes time to do all these big things you really got to know am I listening to the right voice and um but no, that's what we're talking about today we're getting into it we got a scripture that I'm excited about We're going Old Testament. I love this. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. So that's Isaiah. Still Old Testament. First. Wow. Did you just flip right to it? Did y'all see that? (laughs) Did y'all see that? Flip right to it, y'all. Highly favored. Anyway, it's uh, 1 Samuel 3. Basically what's going on here is Samuel is an apprentice underneath Eli. Eli is a prophet. He's a priest. And in this time, Samuel is kind of just learning the ways of the temple. He's learning the ways of Eli. But at this time, Eli's sons, he has, he has a couple of kids. Eli's sons are not honoring God. They're actually using their position to kind of blaspheme God and manipulate things to get the things that they want. And so Eli found out about this, but he did nothing to, nothing to stop him. And so now we're about to step into where God is about to call Samuel. And so we have this really fun moment. I love it. I, I, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And what's crazy is before today, I, I looked it up, and Samuel was only 12 years old Twelve. when this happened and God met him. Let's go. It says, now the boy, 
Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word in the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had become began to grow dim, could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not lamp of God had not gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord sa- said to Samuel, and Samuel said, "Here I am." And he ran to Eli and he said, "Here I am. You called me." But he said, "I did not call you. Lie down again." And when he went to lie down again, the Lord called Samuel again, and Samuel arose and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, Son, go lie down, I did not call you. Now Samuel had not not now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he arose and he ran to Eli and he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli perceived that it was the Lord calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went to lie down in his own place, and the word of them came and stood the same way that he called the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am going to do a new thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears will tingle. Like I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I love that story. No, I do too. I love that story. And there, there's honestly, why I love it so much is because, especially with the topic that we're talking about and hearing God's voice, there's so much value in the scripture that you just read. Mm-hmm. And a couple of things that just came to my mind that relate to me and my walk and my relationship with God personally is, number one, like, it's important to realize like Samuel was dedicated to the Lord from his birth. Yeah. So he was 12 years old when God first spoke to him at this point that you just read in scripture, but he was literally raised in the presence of God underneath Mm -hmm. Eli as his apprentice. So he like grew up like in this temple, in this church. And I think it's so interesting because even though he grew up in, you know, the presence of God, it literally says, in verse know. seven, that he did not know the Lord yet because he had never received a message from him. Mm-hmm. And that's so encouraging because I feel like in my life and I feel like so many people listening, they might be so discouraged because they feel like they've never had that moment where they've heard from God for the first time. But I just want to encourage you guys that God has a perfect timing for everything. Yeah. Like as long as we are continuing to dwell in his presence, just like Samuel did, like it even said in the beginning of that scripture that at that time that the visions from the Lord and it was rare, the words that he'd speak were very, very rare, Mm -hmm. but they weren't impossible. And I think as long as we are continuing to put ourselves in a situation where we're in God's presence and surround ourselves with an atmosphere that he can dwell in and constantly be ready for when he does speak in his perfect time, he's going to speak directly to us, whether it's the first time ever or whether it's just over the situation that we are asking him to intervene in right then. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what we need when we need it. And he will speak to us. Yeah, I think the I think the biggest issue with like you read stories like that and you're like, oh, I can't wait till God speaks to me like this. Right. You know, and then you build up this expectation and this hope that that's exactly how it's going to be. So true. When in reality, God speaks in so many different ways. And a lot of the ways that he did in the Old Testament, like I'm not saying that that's impossible. But what I am saying is like, I feel like so many people just say that's the only way that God can talk. And if he's not talking in this audible, distinct way, then he's probably not talking to me, but God speaks in so many different Mm -hmm. ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'd love to just kind of start out with like, what are some, what are some different ways just in your own life that you've seen God speak to you? Well, it's interesting because if you continue to read through that scripture, the very last verse or one of the very last verses, it literally talks about how God continues to speak to Samuel and reveal things to Samuel through his word. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's a huge way that God speaks to us is through the word of God. Yeah. And what I love about God's word is it's a great place to start if you just have no idea how to get into an actual relationship with God. Mm -hmm. It's opening his word. And a lot of times, like even in my own life, when I'm in my word all the time, I'll begin to understand it more. And I believe God like rewards those who diligently seek him. And as I begin to diligently seek him, like I'll realize that when I open up my Bible, I'll start to get more revelation more and more. But as I, you know, miss reading my Bible a couple of days or a couple of weeks, I do realize in my own life that 
like it's harder for me to understand what scripture is saying or I won't get that revelation as easily. And so I think that the word of God is an amazing way to hear the voice of God because as we begin to open it and as we begin to like, <clears throat> when we feel it, when we don't feel it, keep being persistent in reading and consuming what his word is saying in his time, we'll get to know him like he's a person, like mm -hmm. an actual relationship, and we'll be able to understand his word a lot more. For sure. And so that's been a huge area in my life. What about you? For me, I mean, there's obviously that, you know, there's, there's the word, and I mean, I'll talk on that for just a second, which is just the idea that God is a relational God, right? And this is our book of understanding who he is. Right. It's, it's how we learn his character, the ways he walks, talks, moves, acts, how he treats different people and the way he addresses us. And so understanding this and reading the stories that's in this is a really good identification of this is the person that I'm talking to. Right. Right. And so when you start to hear things and when you start to read things or when you feel like God's trying to say something to you, like he's never going to contradict his word. He's never going to go against anything that's in this. If it's in, if his character is in this and who he is is in this, it's going to be reinforced in this. Right. You know? And so constantly like taking the things that we're hearing and holding it true and holding it and applying it to the word. That's another way that you just like kind of reinforce. Oh, this is from <clears throat> God. Right. Where it's like you're walking down the street one day and you get this feeling of, should I, should I give money to this homeless person? Right. Right. And then you're like, ah, oh, is that going to put me at a disadvantage? Is the devil telling me to give away money or is it God? And it's like, no, like the devil's never going to call you to be generous, but God is right. And so these prompt things that come kind of come into your mind, it's like, it might not necessarily be a specific word, but God will speak to you in certain ways. Cause you never know what that's going to do in somebody else's life. Specifically in my life, <laughs> when, when, when I, when I want to talk to God, I have a routine. Oh, do you? I have a routine. Yeah. It, it's not foolproof. But because God speaks in just a ton of different ways. But what I'll do is I'll get in my room and I'll like turn off all the lights. I'll shut everything. I'll turn all of my like music off. I'll close my Bible. I will just kind of just sit there. And then I ask God, I was like, God, would you speak to me? And then I ask for discernment of God. Can you give me discernment to know that it's your voice? Hmm. And then I just sit. And then I just sit with my own thoughts. And that kind of goes all over the place that bounces i think about a lot of things right all the time um but what i found just in my own life and the way that my my mind works is that if i can see things or if there's distractions or if there's anything happening i'll get distracted so true right but if i like just sit in a quiet place and i turn off all the lights and i make it dark and i just kind of rid try to rid myself of those distractions i tend to kind of hear god a little bit more or i tend to bring my problems to him a little bit more instead of me trying to figure it out i'm like god what do you what do you want me to do with this right and i'm not going to say i walk away from that with the answer all the time but i am inviting god into that area of my life um but there's a lot of ways there's so many ways that god speaks through friends through promptings through right. getting your time alone in solitude by his word he's like he's always speaking i think the real question is like are we listening you know what i mean I think the real question about, about that is like, God's always trying to communicate. God's always trying to do something. There's that verse that says the sheep, like the sheep know his voice and then they follow it. And he's constantly doing something. He's constantly trying to get your attention. He's a relational God. He wants to talk to you. Right. But I think a lot of the times what happens is we're like, oh, I want to talk to God and all this type of stuff. And we go there and we just don't allow time to build that relationship or we don't get in our word and we don't figure out who God is and we don't do these type of things that build that relationship with God. And so we don't really listen. We don't really listen to what God has to say. Yeah, I think a lot of times something that you said in the very beginning that I love so much was that it's so easy for us to like expect God to speak a certain way. True. And so we miss out on him actually speaking because we expected him to speak a certain way. And then when he didn't, we're like, where are you? You discount God? the whole thing. You discount the entire thing. Yeah. So like even reading Samuel, right? God really does speak through his word mm -hmm. so much. And it's a great thing to like bounce off of like, and to have that check, like, okay, does this line up? Because God will never contradict his word. I even love in Psalms, it says, in chapter 33, verse four, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all that he does. So we can know that it doesn't matter what culture says. It doesn't matter what we feel that if it's in God's word, it is right. And it is true. And that it, he will be faithful 
mm-hmm. in all that he does. But I know like in my own life, I think what gets frustrating to me is I want God's will over my life so bad. Yeah. Like I always have ever since I was young. Like that has been such a desire of my heart to be used by God and to be like in right standing before him and in relationship with him. And I think where it gets confusing sometimes is when you want to be in God's will so much and you don't have something tangible to hold on to. Like, okay, I know that I know that God said this. Mm -hmm. It's easy to not do anything. But the problem with that is that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. And it also says in God's word that faith without action is dead. Yeah. So if we are just doing nothing because we're scared to do anything because we want to be in God's will so bad, which is actually a good thing, we're not pleasing God. Our faith is dead. And so where do we find God's voice in the middle of that so that we have something, I guess, tangible enough to step out and say, you know what? God is calling me to this. Yeah. Because God is speaking all around us, right? What you said is so true. But how do we know that it's God? And I think that that's a question that we all face at a certain time. So how do you know it's For God? Sure. Like as you build your relationship with God, you hear his voice more and more and more. It gets more distinct, right? I mean, it's about obedience and it's about faith and stepping out in faith, but it's about the heart, right? And that's what I kept coming back to as I was thinking about that is like, God's not going to be mad at you because you really thought this was him and you chased after it and you jumped out in faith, even though it didn't necessarily make sense to you, you chased after it. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. But at the end of the day, like your heart was like, I want, I'm aiming to please God. I'm aiming to chase after God. And I think that that's what God's after. And I think as you build a relationship more and more with him, that voice becomes more distinct. Right. And as you understand his word more and more and more, you don't have to like, it's kind of hidden in your heart and you're like, Oh, that's God. That's God. That's God. But at the end of the day is like, I don't think that we should be like shuddered in fear because we're like, we heard something and you just kind of hold it to yourself and you don't do anything with it. And you kind of talk yourself out of it. Was it God? Was it not God? At the end of the day, you have to make a decision, right? You have to get to a place where you're like, I'm going to act on something and I'm going to have faith that what I'm doing after Right. After praying about it, after putting it to the word, is this God? I feel like it's God. I'm going to chase after it. And if it fall, just because you meet opposition, I, man, you can go in so many different ways with this, right? There's so many times where like Paul was listening to God and then he went somewhere and he faced opposition, but it wasn't that it wasn't God. There was opposition in it. Or even right? Job. Or yeah. even Job. There's so, like all these Bible characters go, Esther, go, uh, th- everyone. go through things where they hear from God and it's tough. Yeah. And I think so many times we we think that it's going to be an easy journey or it's going to be an easy walk because God's by my side and he called me into this and he's going to, you know what I mean? But it's still tough. And so just because it's tough doesn't mean that it's not from God. But there are things that I will say that you could just kind of talk yourself into or you can go listen to other people or get advice from other people and it sounds right. And you said something to me the other day that was so good that you heard from someone where it's like, some people could want the best for you, but they don't exactly know what the best for you is. I don't know how you said that, but you said it really good. And there's going to be times where you know that you know that you know that it's from God and it's going to be evident because mm-hmm. the Bible says that the, sh- the sheep hear him and know his voice. And that's a promise that he's made to us as we're in Christ Jesus, that we know his voice. But we learn that over time. And so I don't think God is up there like smiting you or getting really upset at you or judging you or anything like that because you made the wrong decision, right? As long as your heart is in the place, like my aim is to please God and I want to do everything that I can to make sure that I'm in right standing and that I'm following the will and the calling that he has on my life. As long as like that's your heart posture, genuinely, (laughs) and you're really trying your best to discern, is this God's voice? I don't think he's upset at you. But I do believe that over time that that gets easier and easier and easier as you learn who he is and as you kind of walk this walk. Well, and I think that's something that I really had to have grace for in my own life is 
just viewing our relationship with God as a muscle that has to be grown. Just like when you go to the gym, like you start out super weak. I'm in the middle of that right now. Like I go to the gym, it's ridiculous. I'm not even going to, I don't go to the gym. This is my pump cover. I go to the Pilates stretch class, guys. It's honestly embarrassing. And my legs are shaking so bad, (laughs) lifting no weight. It's literally just my body weight, having my legs in the air. They're shaking like nobody's business. It's such a mess, bro. Like, I'm so embarrassed right now. But it's true. Like, I had to learn in my relationship with God that it is a muscle that I have to grow. That I don't, I'm not going to know God's voice right away yeah but as i continue to press into him and as i as i continue like you said to like get my alone time with him and say you know what god i'm not just going to talk to you i'm going to sit here and i'm going to listen and sometimes that might look like god implanting something in my head like i could be running through so many thoughts just in that moment with him and then he'll put something in my head that i know was him because truthfully it's some crazy thing I never would have thought of myself. And I know myself. Yeah. You know, you ever had one of those moments? Oh, all the time. Where an idea came in your mind and you're like, that was God because I know I'm not that smart. <laughs> yeah. You know? Or you begin to feel like, and maybe you felt this before. You begin to feel like that pressing on your heart or that stirring and urgency that in your prompting. spirit. Like, like you need to do something. One of the stories that I love in the Bible is the story of Nehemiah. And that's what I'm going through right now. My dad loves this story too. Cool, smiling. To say, I was about to say that. This is like my, one of my dad's favorite stories. But what I love about Nehemiah is that when he finds out, he's a cupbearer to the king. That's his job. And when he finds out that the walls of Jerusalem were lying in ruins after, it was actually after many years that the exiles had returned. Mm-hmm. When he hears this news, he's so deeply burdened by it that it just destroys him. He goes immediately to prayer. That's his immediate response is to go deeply into prayer, to ask God to forgive him for anything that he had done and just to ask God to really intervene that he wants to rebuild these walls and to give him favor in the sight of the king that he was a cupbearer for. And so he lifts up this burden to prayer and then he goes before the king. The king recognizes that he's sad. God opens a door through that and he makes a way for Nehemiah to not only get off of work, but also to get all of the resources that he needs to build this wall. And as Nehemiah begins to build this wall, it says that when he first went over there, that there was only a couple people that went and scouted out the walls at night because he didn't want anybody to know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And it says that, and this is what I thought was so cool. It basically says that Nehemiah didn't tell anybody else Mm -hmm. what he was going to do with the walls, that he kept it a secret. He hadn't told anybody yet what God had put into his heart. And that that next day when they all woke up, he had a call of action, told everybody like, hey, it's time for us to rebuild these walls. And as they began to rebuild the walls, there were certain people that like were mocking them that the enemy tried to use to just diminish what God was doing and the things that God had called Nehemiah to and the people and just discourage them and tear them down. But Nehemiah didn't listen. It actually says that they built up the wall with one hand and they held a sword with the other hand to protect while they were building. Mm -hmm. And this story just has so much symbolism and so much goodness in it. But all of that to say, like, as long as we, like, sometimes God will give us a burden. And that's what that pressing on your heart feels like. But a lot of times that's how I know what is from God and what is not from God is that there will be a burden on my heart that won't go away, but will continue to burn inside of me. And as time goes on, it's not that a fear boils up inside of me because fear is not from the Lord. Our scripture tells us that, but an urgency will burn up inside of me. Like I have to act right now, or there's something that's coming that I have to be ready for. And that's how I know that it's from God. And I think that's something that's interesting too, is a lot of times we talk about looking for the peace that surpasses understanding to know that it's from God and not from God. Mm -hmm. And when I'm feeling this urgency, there's also a peace there, but peace does not mean comfortability. I mean, you look at even the story we just read right now about Samuel. When Samuel got that news from God, when God spoke to him and said, you need to go and tell Eli that I'm basically going to destroy his entire bloodline. Like that was not something that Samuel wanted to know. 12 year old. That's not something that he (laughs) wanted to tell Eli, his mentor, like that was something scary, but there was a peace in knowing that it was what God called him to do, even though it wasn't comfortable. Yeah. And so that's like, that's a huge way that I feel God speaks in my life. And with that too, I do believe that there's such symbolism in the fact that Nehemiah did not tell anybody 
what God had called him to do until it was time. And I know in my life, a lot of times, especially growing up through middle school and high school, and even recently, I saw this kind of like resurfacing again. And I had to, I felt like icky about it. And I had to kind of like take it back. Yeah. Take myself back a second was I realized that a lot of times whenever God was calling me to do something or I felt a prompting from God, I wanted so badly to make sure that it was from God. And instead of going to God about it, I would go straight to people about it. Mm. And I would begin to ask, and my heart was right. Like I just wanted to know. But instead of taking the step where I get in silence, where I get in silence and it's almost uncomfortable because you feel like you're talking to yourself sometimes, I went to a tangible person and I'd say, hey, this is what God's calling me to do. And what do you think about this? And then I'd go and tell my problem or what God's putting on my heart to somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. But the problem was, is because I was taking it to people all of the time over God, and sometimes people are good, but not when it's over God, it was confusing me because sometimes what God's put in our heart, it's just for us to know for then. That's big. People's opinions were clouding my judgment so much that honestly, I didn't even want to do anything with what God called me to do because I was so confused and so crazy in my mind that I thought that I didn't have peace. So I thought it wasn't from God, but really it's just because I was letting the opinions of others flood my mind to the point I couldn't even hear God's whisper. Yeah. And so I had to remove all those opinions and get alone with God and say, what the heck have you called me to do? You know? And it's in that moment that that peace begins to instill again and that he will give you those next steps. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it shows me and it takes a lot of pressure off of me that as long as my heart is right, that God's grace for me is sufficient. And that as long as I'm seeking his will and I'm stepping into what I think he's called me to do and I'm doing my very best, that even if I mess up and even if like I step in the wrong direction, that God's grace and his purpose is going to prevail in my life, that I am not strong enough to destroy what God has for me yeah. as long as I'm doing my part in seeking him. I love that. It reminds me of... um. It reminds me of the story of when I kind of got like my calling for speaking. I remember I was, uh, I've never heard this. I don't think you never heard this. I don't know. So let's start from the beginning. It's real quick. Um, <laughs> so when I was, when I was younger, I was in high school. I went to a, uh, a camp called big stuff and they had it in this big arena. Like it was a big arena in Daytona. And this is why I love conferences. My heart was changed at a conference. My life was changed at a conference. I love conferences, right? We know. So um, I went and it's, I think the fourth or fifth day into this whole thing. And um, it was the first time I ever heard Judah Smith, Judah Smith speak. And he was speaking on stage and halfway through his message, I had this moment where I felt like I was watching myself watch Judah Smith. And I just felt like this, I felt this voice say, you're going to be doing that one day. And I said, Nope. <laughs> I was a shy kid. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do that stuff. I didn't talk in front of people. I just played video games at home and I'm forced to be here right now. I didn't, I didn't have a choice. My mom sent me here. And so, <laughs> so I go home That's funny, bro. And, it, and it almost it pushed me away from the church a little bit. It did. And so I almost had like a Jonah moment where it's like, I heard this is what you're going to be doing. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. I didn't, I don't want to do that. That's so I don't, I don't want to speak in front of people. I want at this point in life, I want to be a wake wakeboarder. And no so, way. yeah. And so I, I go away from church and it's just so funny to look back and see how God was ordering steps mm -hmm. to see how, like, I didn't really want to go into church, but my youth leader invited me back and he gave me a job and he's like, I want you to stack chairs and have all this set up for all the other kids. Like you got an important job. I, and I, and I, I do believe that's an important job. But at that time, I was like, I'm the big man on campus, right? I was like, all you guys, my work, <laughs> right? And then eventually he's like, I, it, we had this like this group for middle schoolers. And he's like, do you want to speak? And I was like, no. <laughs> and so, but ta as time went on, mm -hmm. my heart towards that decided to be like, maybe I do. Right. As I started hearing different things and as I started reading and as I started learning, and it's a longer story than I'm making it out to be. But 
I gave my first message in front of all these little middle schoolers who were not laughing at my oh jokes. Oh my gosh, middle school is like the worst the, crowd to preach in front of ever. No, uh, ever. <laughs> with not laughing at jokes, so beady awkward. little eyes. Oh my gosh. All the lights are on. So I they're love just, you, middle schoolers they're, listening. They're just watching you. But you scare the crap out of me. They, I'm so scared of middle schoolers. Me too. I would rather talk in front of hundreds of people than like a small group of middle schoolers. But even though that was probably the worst message I ever gave (laughs) with the least amount of engagement ever, ever. And it's easy to make middle schoolers laugh. I could not do it. Oh, it's funny. I felt so much peace. Mm. I felt so much peace about what I was doing, even though I didn't want to do it, even though I ran away from it. God has a funny way of bringing your calling into your face. Yes, he does. And bringing you to where you need to be. And when you were just saying that, I'm just sitting there like, it's so true. It's so true. God's going to like, God's going to come through and God's grace is going to lead you into everything that he, that he has for you. Even though you're running, even though you don't want to be a part of it, even though it's probably something that you don't want, God knows. He knows. God knows where he's leading you. And God he makes you go back to the very place you ran from. Just like Jonah, just like you. True. Like you hear the calling or like me, like I heard from God and I went and told everybody else and he brings you right back to the quiet place. You mm-hmm. like got to go right back after the detour. But what's so funny is like, I didn't know I was going to love it. I didn't know I was going to like it's enjoy cool. it. And so as after that happened, then my heart really started to shift. So cool. Then I started to have like a desire to want to know God's word. That that's when I really had a desire to really open this up. What do theologians have to say? What is what is God saying? Like really dissecting this book, and I had like a passion to do it. And so, I really believe. I really believe God's always trying to speak in so many different ways. Whether it's leading you or guiding you, whether it's audible, whether it's through promptings, whether it's through burdens, whether it's through peace or a lack of peace. Like, there's a lot of times where, even super recently in my life, God has made it so evident that I wasn't supposed to be in something. So true. Through me praying that it would come through. And I just could not get peace about it to save my life. Right. Like, almost anxiety anxious. Uh, and then, but the moment I ended it, this is the craziest part. The moment I ended it was the moment I was just like, Phew. it's crazy. What's crazy too, is that could even happen with a desire of your heart, like something that you actually want. And then when you feel anxious about it, even though you want it so bad, when you release it, God gives you that peace. Mm-hmm. It's cr- It's so crazy to me. And what's funny is like, as you were talking, I just spit. <laughs> That's so gross. I saw that. Ew. As you were talking, I started like from remembering all of these times when I was in high school and in college and I was so introverted in mm. my school to the point like literally I think it was two days ago this girl told me Ali you were not the same like you were in high school like you were I was so quiet to myself so nervous to talk to anybody people didn't even know that I went to this school like it was so bad and I remember like walking through the hallways just loving God wanting to be used by him but also like struggling with being like an introvert and nervous to like talk to people because I mm-hmm. felt just awkward. I was homeschooled my whole life. And I remember like God would like literally put a prompting inside of me to go pray for somebody or to go do something like that. And I would literally sit there and I'd pace and I'd be so anxious. And I would think to myself, God, was this really you? Or was this just the worst thought that I could have possibly thought of? Like, was this really <laughs> you? <laughs> or like, no, honestly, you know that feeling though. Oh, I do. Like, God, is this really you? Or am I just literally overthinking things that are just stressing me the heck out that is not from you and I just like think of how can I torture Allie right now like I don't know and I remember I finally had to get to this point where I had a checklist right and this was literally the checklist I would go down I would encourage you guys if you feel these weird promptings too, like go talk to your mom about something or go talk to your boss or bring something up and confront your best friend about it or whatever it is that God puts on your heart that you're like oh I don't want to do this like I don't have peace about it, so I'm not doing it. That's not not peace, right? This is what you run down the line with. Number one, does it grow your faith and your dependence on God? Shoot, going to talk to a stranger when I'm super nervous and extroverted, I mean introverted, absolutely grows my faith and my dependence on God. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what to even pray for this person for. Number two, does it glorify him? If it glorifies God, even if it wasn't God and just you overthinking, it was still good for you to go do it. True. 
Number three, is the burden inside of you growing? Are you going to leave that moment and are you going to regret not doing it and think, what if that was God? Because always, every single time I didn't do it, I always regretted not doing it because I couldn't shake off that burden, but the opportunity was gone. Number four, do you have that peace about it? Even though you're scared, get past all the feelings that you're feeling. Do you feel peace like you were supposed to do it? Like almost like something in you is going against your flesh. Like your flesh doesn't want to do it, but there's something in you that's almost pulling you to it. Like you know that you know you should do it, but you don't want to do it. Like, Mm -hmm. is there a fight inside of you? And number five, is it something you would have never thought of yourself? Like, is it something that you would have never been like, I need to go pray for that random person because they're struggling with this. Like if it's something divine like that, it is most likely for God. And even if you're not 100% sure, if it's going to glorify God and if it lines up with what his word says, I always err on the side of just doing it because it's going to make you stronger. It's going to grow your faith. And what I've learned too is even when I don't know if it is from God, I definitely know when it's not from God. True. And unless I've got a firm no, I'm going to step out in faith and pray that God's grace guides me. I love that. You know? That's a good checklist. Thanks. I like that. It's a stressful checklist, I will tell you. But as you begin to do it more and more, you'll realize that you become more comfortable with it. That muscle begins to grow of faith. Yeah. What I, what I, it makes you available. Yeah, it's it true. It makes you available to what God's trying to do. And I was, I'm, I'm like looking at the story of, um, of Samuel. And I love at the very beginning in verse four, chapter three, verse four, then the Lord, then the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. Right. And even even after he ran to Eli and he came back and it wasn't him, even when God did call him, he said, here I am. And when you make yourself available, that's when the word of God becomes abundant. Right. I look at I look at Abraham. Abraham. Abraham said, here I am. Moses said, here I am. Jacob said, here I am. Um, Isaiah said it. Samuel said it. Ananias said it. And it wasn't until they said that did they step into everything that God had for them. It wasn't until they, they just made themselves available that they actually get to live out the different things that God had in place for them. And then if you jump down to that's crazy, Colby. verse 19, Dang. it says, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And it, it's, just so, it's, just, it's just so cool to me that you get into this place where God's just looking for people that are available. God's just looking, like, the Bible says... God's searching the whole earth to and fro, looking for a heart that's towards him. Yeah. Right? And so that's what we just need to get to. Like, we'll, we'll hear God more and we'll listen to God more once we get to that posture. Right. Once we get to the place where it's like, it's not about me. I just want to do what God wants. I just want to listen. I'm going to still myself. I'm going to make myself available. I'm going to be open to God speaking in different ways, whether it's through audible voices, promptings, lack of peace, peace, like all these different things that he speaks. I'm like, I'm not going to miss a moment when God's speaking Mm -hmm. and understanding and believing it's going to happen in more than just one way. And I need to get rid of my expectation that he's going to talk to me the same way that he talked to somebody else. Right. And it's until you make yourself available, does God do some crazy things? It almost comes in pre-deciding too, that you're going to do it. Yeah. Like when I was growing up in high school, one of my mentors told me, you have to decide before opposition comes that you're going to do something. That when God calls you to do something, your automatic answer is yes, because the second he calls you to do it, the enemy is going to tell you a thousand no's Mm -hmm. why you shouldn't do it. But if you've already pre-decided that you're turning off the opinions of others, you're turning off the opinion of the enemy, you don't care how you feel, how stressed out you are, you are going to step out in obedience and say yes to what God's calling you to. You'll be so shook. You'll never believe the places that God brings you to and the rooms that he speaks your name and you don't even know about the way that you can begin to be used as a vessel when you're simply just available and ready with a yes for God. Yeah. And one of the crazy things, I actually told you this last night, dude, when I'm reading scripture, sometimes it smacks me across the face. Honestly, it's such mic drops. I had to get to the point in my life and we all have to get to this point when we realize that God does not want us half in and half out. That if you are going to be full in for God, then you better be that, yes, I'm ready. I'm available whenever you call me. Mm -hmm. Because it says that he despises the lukewarm, that he spits them out of his mouth. We're either for God or we're against God. We're either either able to be used by God, like a vessel that's able to be used, like 2 Timothy talks about, 
or were not able to be used by God. And the other day I was reading the story of Jeremiah. And oh my gosh, I was telling Colby, this stressed me out so bad. Oh, you told me this? I was like, yeah. Especially in the world that we live in and cancel culture and all of these things, right? And I believe that like we're pretty bold with the things that we believe, but there are some things, you know, your friendships in your life, the things with your boss, like there are just some things like you can dance around yeah. some things, but some things you just don't go near, mm-hmm. you know? And in the beginning of Jeremiah, God calls Jeremiah, who's only 17 years old, to rise up as a prophet against the nations. And I mean, like it's talking crazy, like against really powerful people huge nations. It says that they're even going to turn to Jeremiah and like try to destroy him, but that God will not let them touch him. And as God begins to tell Jeremiah all of these things that he is to prophesy, something that really stuck out to me. And Jeremiah, when he first heard this was like, I'm too young. Don't call me. I can't do it. But God was like, no, I I called you. I know who I called. He knows. God knows you. He He knows who he's calling. But something that stuck out to me was it literally says in the middle of what God's telling Jeremiah to prophesy to these nations that if he doesn't speak all of the words, if he doesn't speak all of the words that God told him to speak, that he is going to make him look foolish in front of them all. He doesn't want him to go speak the things that he, only the things he wants to speak. He wants him to say everything God told him to say, otherwise he's going to look foolish. Mm. And when I heard that, I was like, dang like we're constantly praying asking god god use us god use us expand our territory for your kingdom like we want to be used by you we're all in here i am god make i'm available use me but are we willing to say the things that we don't want to say because if we're not willing to say the things in full we're gonna look stupid true and i don't want to look stupid either Mm -mm. we got to decide what team that we are on and then we got to turn off the opinions pre-decide and go for it i heard one time Somebody said, don't ask God, don't ask God for something unless you're ready to hear what he has to say. True that. You know? So true. Because like more often than not. So true. It's going to be something that you don't want to do or don't want to hear because he's going to, he's going to tell you something that's going to require faith. Right. He's going to tell you something that's going to require dependency on him and it's not going to make sense. But once he tells you, it also requires obedience. Right. I'll even go, I'll even go further to say this. It could be a sign that you're not, if you're not hearing something from God, it could be the fact that you didn't listen to what he told you before. I so believe that. You know what I mean? And since you weren't obedient with what he told you before, he's still waiting on you to go finish what he told you before, before he gives you another task. That's so true. You know? And so oftentimes we create our own delays in this calling and we want to do great things and stuff, but we didn't do that thing. And God's like, we're not moving forward until you're obedient in the area that I've already called you in, you know? And so think back if, if you, if you feel like you, if you, if you feel like you skipped over something that God told you to be obedient in, if you feel like you jumped over an area that you didn't really want to listen to God in, you'll go years down the road and realize I didn't do the thing I did before. And then you'll have to backtrack all the way before you can move forward. So when you hear God speak, you know, it's from him. You've ran down that checklist. Yeah. You walk in obedience. Yeah. And there's grace in that. He leads it. There's there's actually a verse, because God told me that exact thing at one point in my life. I was asking him to use me and to give me next steps. And he literally smacked me in the face and came in my head. Because <laughs> this is what he does. He doesn't speak to me verbally. He literally puts a thought in my head. And I'm like, that was not me talking to myself. And he said, Ali, stop asking me to do things when you don't do what I've called you to do. Mm. If you're not going to do what I spoke over you before, why would I keep on telling you things? It's wasting my breath. We need to stop wasting God's breath. We need to do, if we really do want God to speak, if we really do want to be used by him, we need to move when he talks to us. Because just like a relationship with me and you, how, like, if I constantly gave you advice when you asked for it and you never did any of it, you just wanted to talk about your problems, never wanted a solution, I'd probably stop giving you advice because I'd be irritated by you. So true. You know? I have this thing (laughs) where... All my friends. It's so annoying. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, it's, it's so funny. No, it is. It's so annoying. <laughs> no, I have this thing with all my friends. It happened a while ago. They stopped inviting me places. <laughs> they stopped inviting me places because I, I always said no. And so they started making group chats without me. 
And I'm like, why don't you guys invite me anywhere? And they're like, you always say no. And I'm like, it's still nice to be invited. Give me the option. I know. (laughs) But it's like, it's true. It gets annoying. When you're constantly saying no, people and God are going to be like, why would we invite you? Why would I right. why would I invite you into my story if you're just going to keep saying no anyway? It's true. It's so true. And there's actually a verse that I read during that moment and it said, "To know what is right and not to do it is actually a sin." Mm. And I was like, "Dang." So Got me again. God got me again. <laughs> like what in the world? And what's crazy about that is that sin actually builds a barrier between us and God. Mm. So that then when we do pray, it's harder for us to hear his voice because that's why Jesus came and died for it. That's why Jesus came and died for us. So that bar- that barrier couldn't be there. So then like you're being disobedient. Now there's a barrier and you're wondering why God isn't speaking, but really it's because you need to return back to Nineveh. Like God called Jonah to go back to the beginning. Where did you leave off? What is the last thing God called you to do that you didn't do? Or what's the last thing that you felt a burden about that you didn't go and like bring to God that you brought to other people instead? Instead of just saying, God, what do you want me to do with this? Because that is a lot of times the place that we need to start. Kind of wrapping this up, though, as I begin praying and like asking God to reveal things to me for this podcast, not only for you guys, but for my own personal life about what could be hindering our prayers. Because there are certain seasons that sometimes it really does feel like our prayers are being hindered. And that feeling is actually real. Mm. There are things in our life that we don't even know about that we aren't even aware of that we are supposed to let go of so that God, so that we are actually sensitive enough to hear God's voice. And that barrier of sin, like I just talked about, is not there and that communion is able to happen. So I'm gonna share eight reasons why you might not be hearing the voice of God in your life right now. The first one is fear. And we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier in the podcast, but it's fear or it's thinking that you hold more power than you do. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 says says this, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Second Corinthians verse 12, chapter 12, verses nine through 10 says that his power is made perfect in our weakness. That even if, you know, we mess up, even if we're doing our best, that his grace is sufficient for us. Number two is that sin that I just talked about. Is there sin in your life that you're not letting go of or I'm not letting go of that's creating a boundary between us and God, limiting not only our prayers from reaching him, but his answer from reaching us. It says in Psalm chapter 66, 18, this, if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If there's sin in our lives that we're cherishing, that we don't want to let go of because it feels so good or we like it so much, or maybe it's a relationship or a friendship that God's calling you to let go of, even a job that you love so much that God's saying, like, let go of it, whatever it is. We talked about that a little earlier with Colby. If we're cherishing that over being obedient to God, it's limiting God from hearing our prayers. It's really that serious when we're holding things back from God in our life and not living in full surrender. Number three is doubt. It says in James chapter one, verses seven, verses six through seven, but he must ask in faith without doubting because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should expect to receive nothing from the Lord. When we ask God things, I know there's been seasons of my life that I have definitely doubted that he was going to answer. Even when I was praying, which sounds so ridiculous, but it's true. Mm -hmm. When we are asking God for things and when we're believing, When we're asking God for things, we need to believe that he is a God that can answer our prayers. Number four is laziness. We expect God to make all of the moves. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says this, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your your whole whole heart. heart. Are you not hearing from God because you're not putting in the work yourself? Are you really seeking out God with your whole heart? Because when you do, I can promise you this. This is not something that I am making up or something that I feel. It is a promise in God's word that is right and is true and is faithful, that he will meet you, that you will find him if you are seeking him with your whole heart. Number five, you're getting too many opinions from other people. Nehemiah chapter two, verse 12 says this, then I got up in the night I and a few men with me, I did not tell anyone what God was putting in my heart to do for Jerusalem. 
Guard what God has put in your heart until God says that it is time to tell other people. I even think about Jesus. Jesus loved people, but he still got away in his quiet time with the Lord in communion with him so that the crowd and the noise and the opinions of people around him did not create chaos and clutter his mind from hearing the one true whisper of God. Unforgiveness is a huge one. We think that we can, you know, talk to God, that we're going to receive everything that he has for us, that he's going to speak to us, but we're harboring unforgiveness in our heart. And that's a very serious offense to God. It doesn't matter what anybody has done to you. Obviously, it hurts you. You guys should talk about that. But at the end of the day, it literally says to be forgiven, we must forgive. Mark chapter 11, verse 25 says this, and whenever you are praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your father who is also in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses, we have to forgive others for God to forgive us. And when we don't, it creates a barrier between us and God. Number seven is this impure motives. Why are you really asking for what you're asking for? I know this is something I constantly have to check my heart for. Even when mm -hmm. it comes to God, expand our influence, expand our territory. I have to make sure that my heart and my motives are pure and that they're clean really for the right reasons in this prayer. It says in James chapter four, verse three, you ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. When you're praying and asking God for a relationship, what are you really asking God for? Yeah. Do you really believe that if it is God's will for your life, that he will bring that person into your life in his perfect timing? Don't, don't look at me. <laughs> do, do not, do not look at me. A pause to look at Colby. Fin finish your stuff. <laughs> okay. Last one is ignoring and picking and choosing scripture. This is the very last one, number eight. In Proverbs 28, verse nine, it says this. If one turns away his ear from hearing the law, his prayer is an, abomina his prayer is an abomination. And it also says in James chapter four, verse 17. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Ignoring and picking and choosing God's scripture is something that this world is doing so much right now and that if we're not careful, us as Christians do so easily too. No. Even if it's something that we don't even know we're doing, like opening the scripture and cherry picking the verses that we want without actually reading the context behind it. If we're believing what the word of God says, we've got to believe it in full. I agree. I agree. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people take scripture out of context and kind of manipulate it and twist it for their own personal agenda. Well, a great way too, and this is something that I do in my life, to see whether or not, because sometimes you don't know if it's you or if it is God. And I think just a great principle for us to all add into our prayer routine is it literally says in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Jesus is the perfect example. He prays to God, but then at the very end, he says, but my but not my will, but yours be done. Mm. And I believe that if we are really adding that into our prayers, and if that's genuinely the cry of our heart, that God's will be done over ours, that his desires over ours are what's really important to us, that we're going to land exactly where he has us. If you're in Christ, he's always speaking to you. He's always got a word for you. We just need to be listening. We need to be making ourselves available. We need to be reading ourselves of the distractions, and we need to not constantly be going to a bunch of other people to try and figure out what God's saying. God's going to make it clear to you. And if he's trying to make it clear to you, it, what makes us think that he's going to make it clear to somebody else before it's clear to us? And um, there's this verse in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, and I just love it. And it's, this is his promise to his people. And he says, in your ears shall hear the and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn from the right or to the left. And I just love that. I love that because it says when we're making decisions, when we're chasing after God, when we're walking through this life, there's always going to be a voice in the back of our head. There's always going to be something speaking to us saying, this is the right way. It's the Holy this Spirit, is the way man. that you need to go. This is the way that I'm calling you. This is the way that I'm leading you. And so we need to be attentive and we need to be listening. And we need to be applying what we're hearing to this word. Is this God speaking or is this myself? Am I trying to get it? Am I trying to really chase after God or am I trying to chase after my own desires? But there's always a voice speaking to you. And so God's not too far away. God's not gone. God hasn't left you. God's not, ta not, not talking to you. He's for us. Yeah, he's for you. He wants 
a relationship with you. He's always by your side. And so make yourself available. Actually try to listen to what he's trying to say. Actually try to chase after the places that he's calling you to go. And so there's always a voice speaking, leading yeah. you. Yeah. Grow that muscle of the Holy Spirit within us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, it talks about how, you know, man knows, like man, man knows the spirit of man, but who knows the spirit of God except for the spirit? And we have that Holy Spirit within us. I love that verse. And I love that verse because it's like God is for us. At the end of the day, like he wants us to walk in the will that he has for us. It's not some huge puzzle that he wants us to figure out. Like he wants the best for us, which is why we need to grow that spirit within us. We need to like get to know him. And it's so cool because as you begin to do that, it almost becomes like a superpower, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm super excited for today. And I know we read a lot of scripture today, but honestly, there's no better thing that we could read and that we could share with you guys than the scripture and the word of God. True. Because more than our opinions, that is 100% true. And so if any of those things that I read off of maybe things that you have in your life that are hindering you hearing from God, you know, kind of struck in your mind or in your heart, I would encourage you guys take a step out in faith, get rid of that thing because it's truthfully not worth risking not being used by God or in relationship with him for. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more fulfilling than being right standing before God, being used for the purpose he's intended and being able to hear his voice. And I promise as you begin to lean in, you are going to hear it. But we love you guys so much. Yep. Make sure you guys leave a like, a comment, subscribe, Review. leave a rating, say I'm awesome. Yeah, say cool. And awesome. Allie's chosen sweater is sick. <laughs> and cool, we will dude. see you guys next we week. We love y'all so much, guys. See you later.